I would like to demonstrate today from GeoModeler the direct export of a finite element mesh which is layered and ready for use in FeeFlow. This will utilize Seagull libraries to triangulate the topography of the GeoModeler model according to geology. Next, the finite element mesh is exported as a layered mesh with three attributes. Firstly, rock type, which will be designated according to the mesh element spatially. And secondly, there will be uh, vector information, which is suited to the internal field lines of the built geology shapes of the solid model. To remind ourselves a little bit about uh, how that is available, I'd like to show you that uh, the field lines internal to the volumes are available to us to see how they form. You may be reminded from previous YouTube videos in this series that GeoModeler is an implicit modeler and it couples together structural data with the contact data of the boundary. Treating it as an isopotential surface, the dip data are treated like a field line of the surface in 3D. Therefore, we have the capability to reuse these trend lines when deriving angles uh, which later become useful for phi and theta inside the fee flow environment when anisotropy of flow is important. And just to show you a little bit of detail of this Mansfield model with some variations, we have included um, a, a finite fault as well as an infinite fault, one here that charges right across the model and one here which is limited. We've also added to it a dike. Therefore the full model is rather representative of complex geology but not so complex that we can't perform this within a short demonstration. One final note before we launch the menu is to remind you that this is uh, not uh, the mesh you're going to be uh, outputting. This is created by the regular visualize uh, tool in GeoModeler which is a marching cube approach. And just to be sure that uh, we know that this 3D visualization is, is not part of what's being exported, we're just going to recompute the model, which uh, takes into memory another mathematical solution and blows away our last model. Now we're ready to commence the export of the mesh. In the main menu, select Export 3D Model Model. This launches a dialog box, which enables you enables you to set up the parameters of the mesh. Let's browse to a suitable place and give it a name. Layered Finite Element Mesh and save. Next we choose the 3D export type which is free flow. And next in the grid size we make a choice about the number of meters for the cell size of the discretization. I'm going to reduce these somewhat to make it a more refined mesh. For the choice of the Z, I don't need the model to be as deep as what the solid geology model has been built at, so I'm going to reduce it to a Z of a limit of minus 1000 below sea level. But I'm going to keep the discretization the same. So that will be 60 units in the Z direction. And press OK to launch the measure. The menu closes when the export has finalized. And now let's take a look at the products that were generated. So we have this FEM file um, and we have a .data file being the triangulations. The next thing to do is to launch FeeFlow and then we're going to just drop and drag the new FEM file. This action launches a 3D viewer and a 2D slice viewer. I'm just closing that for the moment and here we have the first uh, recognition of a layered finite element mesh. It's not attributed at the moment until we apply the user data.
Our next thing to do with the 3D viewer activated is to see the user data and double click on rock type. This loads the geology into the elements of the mesh. So you will notice the adaptive nature, for example, around the fault offsets. There is some nice work in the triangulations. Another thing to notice is some adaptation to the layered mesh around angular features of the geology. Additionally, this mesh will be watertight and manifold. The next thing to do, under the main menu window, New 3D View, we'll take another view of the attributes of the user data offered. That's dip. These are the dip angles from horizontal. And likewise, the third is the, the trigonometric azimuth. This one is uh, a value between 0 and 360 degrees. But unlike mapping convention azimuth, it's important to realize that this time the trigonometric azimuth has been used, which uh, takes another reference point. And just to illustrate that briefly, the way the trigonometric azimuth is uh, referenced is from the east as the origin, where zero commences here in the east and moves anticlockwise around. So a value out here is at 180. And just returning to FeeFlow now, um, we have uh, in review, we have the trigonometric azimuth between 0 and 360. We have the dip angle from horizontal displayed also. And finally, the rock type patches. Thanks for listening.